This is indeed a miracle. In three, two, one. I give you the beautiful Tso Marpo at 5,000 meter altitude in Ladakh. Tso basically means lake and Marpo means red. So let's look why the color of the water is red and how to hike all the way to this beautiful lake. Now Ladakh is divided in two districts, namely Leh and Kargil. One of the sub-districts in Leh is Khalsi. Now if you follow the Leh Kargil highway, then in one of the side valleys lies the village of Fotoksir, which acts as the base village for Tso Marpo. The village is some 160 kilometers away from Leh by road. And the lake Tso Marpo sits right beneath the Fotang Kangri glacier. So let's begin the hike to Tso Marpo from the beautiful village of Fotoksir. Good morning everyone. 12th of August 2023. The time is 5.13 a.m. I'm in uh, this beautiful village of Fotoksir. And now we are starting our walk towards the beautiful Tso Marpo. Trying to stick to a trail. So that it's easier for everybody else to follow once it is mapped. Even if we see in the map, you can see that we're exactly on the Survey of India trail. Time is uh, 6.04. Yeah. And I'm uh, marking things on the go, so I've marked the shepherd camp. So guys, in the very first start, we've done some 4 plus kilometers. And we are close to... 4400 I think uh, we have climbed some two three hundred meters and the lake is at 5000 meters and if you look at the map of the trail you'll see that we are hiking into a side valley with the Fotang stream magnificent glaciers and I think this is the Gyamso Chan glacier one of the streams feeds the Fotoksar village down below Uh, we are almost at 4600 meters. We have done some 6k in the last one and a half hours. Very cold. We are moving towards the sunlit landscape. Oh, it instantly feels nice and warm. Otherwise, it was all pretty cold and windy. So after hiking for 9 kilometers, we have exhausted the Survey of India trail. So there is no red line beyond this point, see? And the lake is still some approximately 5 kilometers. It's right here. So now we hike using the knowledge of uh, contour lines and uh, any clues that we can find on the ground. <laughs> It has been good, nine kilometers in the last two and a half hours. Uh, no evident trail, but I think I would stick on the right bank. Again, keep hiking uh, upstream. 
beautiful landscape with some amazing rock cliffs now staying on the trail is crucial because it saves a lot of time it is difficult to capture the real beauty in the camera nice contouring trail the water stream flowing right next to you yaks grazing at uh, 4800 meters and you don't even have to go to the river to get the water I am marking all these uh, side streams as springs for portable water and this uh, this can be such a beautiful campsite in the last three hours we have done almost 11 kilometers and uh, now so Marpo will be in this side valley so this is the stream that is coming from the glaciers up there and see the water stream is flowing through a pretty gradual terrain and therefore the stream crossings are not to be worried about we also have some Beautiful flowers here. It's a pretty lively landscape. Now all this debris, you should clean your feet, especially the one that is in between your fingers, because if you don't clean this, then this will definitely give you blisters now we are on the left bank of the Fotang river stream we are close to 5000 meters with the 50% of oxygen there is no uh, prominent uh, trail to follow no no cairns so I think I'll just contour my way up now if you're hiking solo then be extra careful in uh, these sections which is uh, filled with boulders because this is where if we try and push and hurry you might get an ankle twist and obviously you have what uh, 13 kilometers to cover on your way back so uh, this is where you have to be cautious take breaks drink some water when you come by road at Sirsirla there you'll be able to see this beautiful side valley yesterday when I was riding to Fotoksar that's when I saw the valley for the first time a lot of uh, red colored stones and rocks all around here it is Whew. can you see it so the glacier sort of feeds the lake and uh, hence the color thanks to the topography all around let's go uh, closer to the lake for that we'll uh, climb down and then uh, climb up again and obviously this is uh, not known to people as of now so no garbage no plastic zero zero plastic waste and i hope that all those individuals who will see this video and come for a speed hike here will also have a minimal ecological footprint and 
they leave the place as beautiful as it is Whew. and here I give you the beautiful to Marto Wow I have I haven't seen anything more beautiful than this and we were able to do it in 4 hours 30 minutes 14.5 kilometers but if I remove the 1.5 uh, road section from the homestay from the bridge from where the trail starts it is actually 13 kilometers long wow wow this is so pretty we made it to the lake <laughs> now I'll just sit relax and I have some packed food from the homestay uh, so I'll eat that and just 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 be in the moment and enjoy this beautiful landscape So I had packed the rice and some green veggies from the homestay and then the lady only gave me the, the tiffin box It's a pretty, pretty sizable lake. <laughs> now the obvious question is that how do I came to know about this beautiful lake? So thanks to Dhruv, uh, I think we are connected on Instagram and it was maybe an year or year and a half ago when he shared a screenshot with me uh, in the chat box and he said that uh, some people in Ladakh told him, some locals, that there is a lake which is red in colour. and. Uh, then I usually use this tool called Fat Map. I looked up for this lake and the clue I had was that it is near uh, Potoksar, the village of Potoksar. That's when I stumbled upon it and the lake just looks extremely beautiful when you when you look it in, in a satellite map. Now, why is the color red? Now, when I was researching about this lake online, I came across a PDF, a document. I'll drop the link of this document in the video description. The remote sensing satellites actually came across this lake in 2004. Uh, again, thanks to Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. I'm reading the document for you. It says that the lake has not changed in color and size over the years. And uh, the local geology actually plays an important role. And an iron dominated lithology of the region interacts with the snow and glacial meltwaters and subsequently deposits red slash brown colored suspended silt in this pro glacial lake and due to this high concentration of suspended solids they have this particular lake has a dominant reflectance at 660 to 700 nanometers and thus causing the red slash brown color of the water in the in the lake it is getting windy by the minute and i also usually uh, get asked a lot that you know i should go check how the lake is check what how hard the, the, the ice cover is maybe sink my feet in the lake or maybe skinny dip but uh, in my personal opinion i i i have never done that i would never do that i would not poke a pole to check how how thick the ice sheet is i would not throw a stone to check the same i don't even touch the lake to be honest i leave it as as pretty as it was for me for the next person to come so i usually try to minimize my ecological footprint and uh, i think this is this is good enough uh, to just sit here to be able to sit here for 45 minutes one hour with literally no one around it's just you 
and this magnificent landscape and then again thanks that the weather is so nice that it has been such a such it, it almost all of this was done with such an ease so going and touching the lake doesn't doesn't actually make sense and i even noticed that there were many birds chirping here when i was not here and since the last half an hour to one hour i can see that you know they are not they are not around the lake so uh, forget about touching i i try my best to just stay here for a while and just head back so that so that the whole ecology starts sort of interacting with one another i know how many yaks and marmots i'll disturb on my way back and this is another reason why i prefer speed hikes and avoid camps i camp only if it is absolutely necessary but 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 this is just me i'm not saying that this is something that everybody should do we all have our own ways to experience the outdoors and and this one's mine <laughs> yeah i feel so blessed i feel so so blessed that i made it here and now 50% of the work is done all i have to do is head back so i was here when the clock was at 4 hours 30 minutes now it has it is at 5 hours 17 minutes so i think i spent 45 minutes here eating talking to you guys and absorbing the views at this lake the time is 10:30 am the lake is at 5070 5080 meters i know man what a what a beautiful day let's roll back bye bye so marco you have been amazing <laughs> yeah. let's get back to photoxer now be a little careful on these rocks we see the valley again lovely don't be afraid of the ox the moment i'll go near him he'll just run away beautiful yak looking at me hello ji See again they'll move out of your way No harm done Again if we could just learn how to become better at offline navigation and just stick to a trail we'll be able to do hikes with so much more ease We have passed the 25 kilometer mark 
and uh, 7 hours 53 minutes so 8 hours more or less but yeah these 8 hours is not just the moving time it is the elapsed time so this is the total uh, duration it includes each and every break big or small a flat walk all the way till the homestay it is exactly 28.7 kilometers done in 8 hours 34 minutes back to 4200 meters hello Hello, Julie. Huh? No, 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 and uh, hats sort of gives you an all-round protection so this has been my recent learning so now i am wearing hats in almost <laughs> all the videos now if you want to do it so uh, marpo as a diy trick as an independent hiker then uh, please make sure that your body is acclimatized well because the base village fotoxer is at 4000 meters the village has good road connectivity plus it also has good network geo works very well but obviously either a postpaid sim or a prepaid sim that uh, you had bought in Leh or Ladakh. With the recent popularity of the lake, the locals have created a sort of a committee and now they are also charging some 500 to 800 rupees per person. And uh, they might also tell you that you are not allowed to go there without a guide, but there is no such thing as of now. I was able to hike independently. And the charges for the stay in the homestay are somewhere around 1000 to 1500 rupees. And I think they are going to go up every single year. I'll drop the contact of the homestay in which I stayed. The people are really nice. And uh, you can actually do this as a day hike if your body is acclimatized and you have some sort of an experience of speed hiking. But yeah, this is all from my side. I'll also write a detailed blog on kridas.in about this particular lake. It might take some time, but uh, do check out this space, kridas.in, where I'll start adding blogs to all the hikes that I've done. Yeah, so that's all as of now. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.